Good morning, everyone. Once again, it is Sunday school time, and we look forward to breaking the bread of life and looking at what God has in store for us on this morning. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it's once again that we come before your presence. God, we thank you for watching over us and for keeping us. God, we thank you for this opportunity that we can just get into your word and discuss your word and commune with each other as we commune with you. We ask God that you give us open hearts, willing hands, and listening ears that we might be able to not only hear your word, but God, that we will be able to do what your word said that we should do. We pray now, God, for love, for peace, for understanding. We pray, O oh God, for a better relationship between each other, knowing, O oh God, that we are all your truth. And despite our differences, we can meet at a common ground. So we thank you now, and we ask you to keep us in your care. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen and amen. Today is Sunday. April 15, 2022. Continuing our unit study for this month, Strong in the Spirit. And our lesson topic for today's discussion is the conversion of the Apostle Paul. The lesson scripture, we're coming from Acts, the ninth chapter, verses one through 19. Our key verse, then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Talking about conversion. And you know from that verse, we're going to be focusing on Paul's conversion. Our essential question. If you were asked to choose another word that would mean the same as conversion, what would that word be? And keep your answer in mind. Another word, synonym for the word conversion. Keep it in mind because we will get to that point as we go through our discussion. The lesson aims. At the end of this lesson, the participant will be able to, number one, understand the meaning of conversion. Number two, understand what it means to be converted to the Lord. That indicate that there's more than one kind of conversion. But what we'll be focusing on is converted, being converted to the Lord. Our introduction. In our strong in spirit lesson for today, we will discuss the conversion of Paul. According to the New Testament book of Acts of the Apostle, Paul was a Pharisee who participated in the persecution of early dis disciples of Jesus. Paul was converted to Christianity on the road to Damascus as the persecuting followers of Jesus. And of course, we, we know Paul's story. We know about how he was on his way to persecute uh, Christians, uh, followers of Jesus, and he met Jesus on his way, or he met God on his way. After his conversion, Paul became a part of a community of believers. Paul asserted that he received the gospel, not from man, but directly by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And for that, we can go back to the story of Paul's conversion. You know, there were several things that happened to Paul when he encountered God on his way to Damascus. First of all, he was knocked off his beast. And then he was blind. And he remained blind for three days until uh, God sent one of his disciples, Ananias, to Paul, and that was in, in our key verse, talked about Ananias and how he went to Paul and he prayed for him and he laid hand on him. Now God had commanded him to do this. He, had, he had, didn't do this on his own, but God sent him to Damascus to find Paul and to pray for Paul. And when he prayed for him, laid hands on him, his sight returned and Paul was, was converted. Now remember, he was persecuted of the followers of Jesus Christ. But after this experience, and it says that when Paul received his sight, he received his sight physically, but he also received his spiritual sight because now he knew who God was. Not only that, but he became one of the greatest apostles of Jesus Christ. 
After Paul's conversion, he was strong in the spirit. He began proclaiming the gospel in Damascus and beyond, and initiating a life dedicated to the ministry. Paul was converted from being the leading persecutor of Christians to become Christianity's greatest ambassador. And he traveled all over the world, and it's amazing the amount of traveling he did in that day of time, day of time because he didn't have airplanes or cars or bus or anything like that. But he traveled in different parts of the world, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now our exposition for today's lesson. Let's begin our exposition by taking a closer look at the word converted, our key word in today's lesson. We gave you the example of Paul and how he was converted. But let's see how this relates to the rest of us. Marion Wester defines conversion as the act of changing or the process of being changed. That brings us back to our central question where I asked if you were to use a substitute word for the word conversion, what would it be? My word would have been changed and I'm sure some of you probably use the same thing because when we're talking about conversion, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about change. And changes take place in a lot of different forms. So let's continue our discussion of conversion. Conversion takes place on three different levels, intellectual, moral, and spiritual. All three types of conversion complement one another in directing a self-transforming process that ultimately lead to the main goal, which is love for God. That's the main goal of conversion, leading you to the love of God. Let's take a closer look at the three levels of conversion so that we can better understand how they work together to make us the converted people that God wants us to be. The first level is intellectual. That deals with our mind, with the way we think. And one thing about conversion, when we are converted, we must change the way that we think. Refer back to Paul, the way that he thought about Christians before and after he was converted. We must think the way Jesus thought. Our attitudes towards each other must be the same as Jesus' attitude was when he was here on this earth. Change the way you think about us. Look at the attitude of Jesus. He had no, no particular person. He was no respecter of person. He helped everyone and he loved everybody. And so when we say change the way we think, we have to think the way that Jesus did. Philippians 2 and 5, said, let this man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you think should be in line with what Jesus did, the same mind. The second level of conversion is moral. And moral comes from the word morality. And that deals with what you know is right, the difference between right and wrong. We must do what we know in our heart is right, regardless of the consequences. Sometimes you may have to hurt people's feelings when they don't support, when you don't support them, or join with them in some unholy activity. And they will do or say anything to get you to indulge in things that you know are not pleasing to God. But it says that morality, doing the right thing, means that you do it regardless of the consequences. So when you are converted, not only your way of thinking changed, but the way you act change also. The third level of conversion is the spiritual. It's the spiritual part. This is an easy one. If you're spiritually converted, then you will do what is pleasing in the eyes of God. It's just that simple. If you're in doubt about what is pleasing to God and what is not, study his word and it will be revealed to you. You will know whether what you're doing is pleasing in the eyes of God when you, when you read God's word, because it will guide you in the right way to go and the right things to do. So those are the three different levels of converting, of being converted. Now, our next question, who should be converted? In case you're wondering, who should be con converted? Let me help you out on that. Psalm 51 and 5 says, Behold, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, 
and in sin did my mother conceive me. You getting an idea? If not, let's go to John 8 and 7. Jesus told the crowd that was about to stone the woman who was caught in adultery, let him among you who is without sin cast the first stone. No stone was cast. That tells us something. One more for you. Rome 3 and 23 says, For we all have sinned and fall short for the glory of God. So who should be converted? Who need to be converted? Who needs to change their ways, their way of thinking, their way of living, their way of talking, their way of walking? I'm going to let that answer, leave that answer up to you. But it should be pretty obvious. The lesson applied. If you are truly converted, you will. These are the things that will tell if you truly converted. First thing, you walk in the light and obey God's commandment. Walk in the light. You won't be hiding things in darkness. Everything will come out in the open. The second thing, you will live by the Spirit so as not to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful na nature. Let's break that down. Let's go through that again, because there's a lot in there. It says that you will not give in to the desire of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. In other words, they're not in the same, in agreement. The sinful nature and the spirit is not in agreement. That's why Paul says that there's a war going on inside of us. There's the good and the evil. There's, there's contrary spirits that are, are trying to control us. But whatever the, the sinful spirit desire is just the opposite for the spirit. And whatever is, is good for the spirit is, is not good for the sinful nature. They will never agree. You will never come to the same point. The next thing Next way you will know if you're truly converted. You not only know what is right, but you have a desire to do the right thing. Not because of fear of getting caught or being punished, but because of your desire to please God. Some people do the right thing, but they do it only because they're afraid of the consequences. What's gonna happen if they get caught? Well, this is saying if you're truly converted, you do the right thing because you have a desire to do the right thing. You have a desire to do what's pleasing in the eyes of God. And not because you're afraid of the punishment. And the last point on the knowing if you're truly converted. You understand the importance of abiding in God's word. Sounds for me, that's our theme for the year. Abiding in God's word. And today we said if you're abiding in God's word, then you should become strong in the spirit. So the importance of abiding in God's word so that you will continue to grow strong in the spirit. You will understand that and you will continue to do God's will and you will continue to be the Christian, the type of Christian that God wants you to, do, to be. Once you are converted, your whole life will change. You become a new person and you continue in the love and the commandments of God, our Savior. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Keep on praying. Be safe. And we'll talk to you again soon.